save your life. Good morning. Hope you guys are doing well. We are here for our YouTube live breakfast session. We brought in at this time per your request. <laughs> and we also have cinnamon rolls, which I tried to make and it's been several complications, but it's okay. We're gonna eat them. So I hope y'all are doing well. We are missing Julianne. She is still in high school. So she has online classes until I think 12 today. So Julianne, if you're watching, what's up? She's not watching. I can, she Uber eats Chick-fil-A to her. So that's leaving the house. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I told her. So, I know y'all had some questions you were going to be submitting today, and we're going to try to find some of those and answer them. Ellen, do you have any questions for us? Coming up. Katie made uh, cinnamon rolls for everybody, so we have this. Do you want to tell them your process? Um, you can find my entire video process on my Instagram, where you would, you will, if you do that, you will see my KitchenAid mixer smoking, um, <laughs> which actually wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> that was so exciting. I had uh, several friends from church are excellent cooks, and so amongst several phone calls last night, I kind of got a game plan, and made dough for the first time using wheat flour and first time don't judge me but the recipe called to add gluten to this so i know a lot of y'all are like getting gluten out of your diets but we're putting it in over here sorry guys huh. but gluten makes stuff stick together better so i guess if you use a flour like wheat flour that makes stuff you know break apart a little bit you just put some gluten in there and it's it's good so i haven't tried it yet it looks nice, but you kind of scared. Wait, wait, we have a comment from Andrew Lloyd says, Shout out to the Franz family who made great music before the Petersons broke out. <laughs> we do also have a question. Before the Petersons were even a thought. <laughs> from Brian Mumford, he says, Emmett, please tell us about when and how you started out musically and what attracted you to the Dobro. Mm -hmm. What was the first part of that question? Uh... When and how you started out musically. When and how. And then why the dobro. Well, I grew up in a family band. Kind of like this. But <laughs> I was uh, around four years old when I started singing on stage. I would go up for like one song maybe and sing My Cute Little Sister. And then we'd sit down for the rest of the show. Every so I wasn't super involved back then, but that's when we started. Um... It wasn't till like five years later that we decided we wanted to be a bluegrass band. Up until that point, we had just been singing to tracks, kind of doing the southern gospel thing. And then uh, we started getting instruments, and uh, my brothers all took the cool instrument. <laughs> and then by the time I came of age, Debra was the only thing left. So one of the cool instruments was banjo? <laughs> yeah, it was one of the desirables. <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> you were like, <laughs> Caleb takes the bandage, you're like, <laughs> come on, man. Awesome. Um, we have, oh, I had a question. I'll pop in here. Hi. Um, we had a question from Spencer. And for those of you guys that are part of our Patreon, we set a goal and we said once we were able to receive $1,000 a month in pledges, we would release a video with a thousand seconds of yodeling by myself with Katie, Matt, and Julian dancing. And believe it or not, Spencer Sanders was actually inspired by this and has been practicing yodeling after watching this no. video. So he asked <laughs> how you yodel, and it really is just kind of like being able to control your voice from where you're singing, um, kind of from your chest or your stomach, and then popping it up to what they call your falsetto or head voice. 
So it's just getting really good at practicing that vocal pop. And there's no pretty way to learn how to do this. It's just going to sound terrible for a long while. But um, just get some CDs. Find someone you like that you like to hear yodel and just sing along with them would be my yeah, find, find your favorite yodelist and just <laughs> keep at it. Make your yes. stomach so. pop to your head. And your heart. Um, we have, sorry, I'm just going to keep popping back in. Uh, Davey Foley says, do any of you have a favorite song to perform? Also, what do you like doing besides music? So, Matt, you can start with that one. Do you have a favorite song that we perform? When we used to perform for our past. A favorite song? I've always liked Shenandoah. It's such a pretty song. So it's you it's like usually at the front end of the set, so I'm in a really good mood too, for sure. So <laughs> We're you're just playing starting. that song and you're like, oh wow, life's great, we're playing music together. <laughs> Thirty minutes later hours. I'm like, get it over. Hey, it stops during Rocky Art Top or... <laughs> Yeah, Rocky Top would not be at the top of that list. <laughs> and then Pastime other than music, is that yeah. what it was? Right now, I kind of been into puzzles. <laughs> it might be over. We did one puzzle, <laughs> and it was really fun. I was like waiting for the day to end so I could bother Julian to go over and play with the puzzle. Not play with the puzzle, but I mean, Just put, it put it together. Anything with Julian is playing. Played a rules and show. I am the man. We also have several comments on. I am the man. There's nothing beneath him. <laughs> if we normally eat cinnamon rolls with knives and forks because we're on a live, or well, These... we don't eat a whole lot of cinnamon rolls. You have icing. You have to use a utensil. Yeah. It looks These nice. need knives. <laughs> it's my first time. No, they're really good. Uh, uh, at Dollar City. We do not use silverware when eating cinnamon rolls. We just like stick it. Somebody said, yes, you are, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, Ellen. Uh, <laughs> people want to know, where's Baby Cookie? Multiple people have referred to Julianne as Baby Cookie. Is that her username now? I don't know, but we explained earlier she's in school. She is currently studying and missing out on the cinnamon rolls, but she'll be at mm -hmm. rehearsal later. Beth McCormick wants to know if we've, well, I guess Mike wants to know if we've ever considered singing What a Day That Will Be. This is a great song. We should. That is a really good Katie, past times other than music. Um, I like cooking. <laughs> kind of recently. Um, cooking, and I've been trying to learn how to do a little bit of gardening. I have no sort of knowledge mm. yet. So. What are you growing? Uh, on purpose. On purpose, what are you doing? Uh, I'm trying to grow some flowers. <laughs> <laughs> there are some weeds out there that I've been getting rid of a lot. But yeah, doing that. I like reading, so I've been trying to read some too. Catching up on a lot of stuff that I've just been uh, too busy to do until now. So yeah, I like doing that. And just learning. Pretty much takes up my days. What about you, Ellen? Um, I don't know that I have a favorite song to right. perform. I really do love Sweet Beulah Land because the message is beautiful and it's a beautiful song. And it, you can tell it means something to the people when we're doing it. So I like that song a lot. Um, as far as outside of music, I just love hanging out with people and doing different things. So I don't like always going out to eat or always having a bonfire, but I like spreading out different things and just being with people. So just a variety in it. Mm. To you. Some good stuff in there, Alan. Thank you. <laughs> really deep. I've learned a lot about you. We need a fake microphone <laughs> with like a hand drawn logo. <laughs> Drop it. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Favorite song right before 
the apocalypse <laughs> was probably still the one. I'm gonna read something. Probably just because it was the newest. But... <laughs> also, <laughs> coming to YouTube soon. I'm not sure when, but it's on the camera. Yeah. Um, we have another question. This one is from Caleb, and I don't want to attempt your last name, Caleb, because I'm too scared to. But so, what is your favorite place in the USA besides Branson that you've ever been? Katie, do you want to? Um, well, I do love going up to Colorado. Skiing out there is super fun. There's a lot of places I would still like to go see. But my top couple places I've visited have been Smoky Mountains. That was a beautiful trip. Mm -hmm. And I really did enjoy, I enjoyed Colorado so many more times. So. Mm -hmm. What's the question? <laughs> favorite, favorite place, place in the U.S. besides Branson. Besides they know Branson. Branson. Do they know Branson's our favorite. In the U.S. <laughs> Don't act like that's a detriment. You can think about it. I'll think about it. In it, do you have a favorite oh. besides Branson? I have all sorts of favorites. There's just lots of different stuff you can see everywhere. Um, up in Washington, Olympic National Park was really nice. I really like how the mountains meet the ocean out there. Maine, super cool. We got to go on this lobster fisherman's boat. And he boiled lobsters for us in the boat. So he knew you were it was That's awesome. Yeah. So did you catch the lobster and then he immediately boiled it for you? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Wow. I just kind of cruised around in his little fishing boat and ate lobster and threw the shells in the ocean. That, was That's that would be fun. Did you take the tail to kind of clean it up? Or what you to do? The, anyways, poop Who pulled it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you don't need the poop pain. Did you show you did that? Yeah. So this is from Grass Music is steeped in religious roots. You as a family are obviously true to your love of Jesus. Do you find it difficult to play audiences other than religious crowds? Is it common in your brains and shows to have a great response from non-religious people? Actually, yes. Um, pretty common, I, at least in the Branson shows. For uh, we we always do a couple gospel numbers at least. Sweet Feel the Land is super popular and I know a lot of people who even don't share the same beliefs as, as us have talked with us after the show about Beulah being one of their big parts of the show. So it's still a beautiful moment to them, and we always hope and pray that it communicates uh, the bigger purpose of why we do what we do. That being said, in Ireland as well, when we go there, it's not like we have a similar background or, um, I guess, we haven't been raised the same way in a lot of ways as a lot of the people there with how religion and church goes, but um, they love music so much and the religious songs, the songs centered around the gospel tend to be some of their favorites as well and all over the country. So. I think a lot of times I enjoy just as much playing for a non-religious event. We get hired for several outreach events where it's just a festival or um, private event and it's fun to be able to share the music which is something that we all have in common but then also like be able to witness and to bring that um, component into it so yeah 100% we love playing for religious events non-religious events all the above so um let me find another question lots of people want to know what we do besides music my I'm supposed to say it's my favorite place in the U.S. Uh, yes, other no. than Branson <laughs> is the McCormick's front porch. <laughs> Yay! <Yeah. laughs> this is nice little paradise. Do you want to tell everybody the address? Nope. <laughs> <clears throat> I 
Okay, this is from Doug Cook. Could Katie explain the difference between violin playing and fiddle playing? How the unique twangy fiddle sound is made as opposed to a classical violin? Yeah, so the difference between a violin and a fiddle is really just a stylistic difference. It's the same instrument built the same way, even um, the same strings used for either classical or fiddle music, but it's kind of like the difference between Irish fiddling and just playing a regular fiddle tune. It's completely up to the style, and if you look up different fiddle players, there's just such a wide variety of how people play. There's several uh, country fiddle players that play with a classical style, kind of like Mark O'Connor. Um, it's very smooth, clean, and then there's a lot of the old-time fiddle players who you would definitely label as a fiddle style of music where there's a lot of two strings being played at once. That's kind of an iconic fiddle player move. It's called double stops. Uh, more slides, not as clean of playing, um, and that would kind of be considered fiddling. But you can really make make it sound more twangy or not, just how you play it. Some fiddles are built a little bit differently to have more of that sound, but for the most part, it's just the style. So good, yeah. <clears throat> Batch. I'm just giving you this. <laughs> <Well, laughs> <we're in> <laughs> is Philip. Santos sent us twenty dollars trying to buy a cinnamon roll. What? <laughs> oh no! I don't know how to do He's that. In, I don't know who said. I don't know who. Anyways, <laughs> somebody's trying to buy a cinnamon roll, Katie. So you probably don't want these. We'll put it in between two CDs. <laughs> um, okay, this is from. We have two good questions. One is from Denise Fung, and she says, "What's the best thing that has happened?" For you, as a result of having to stay home? Um, I guess I've, I haven't been caught up on my sleep since... Ever? Ever. <laughs> junior high, maybe? <laughs> you also, Matt did cash taxes. I did taxes. Nah, that's not going to be what I was going to say. That's so lame. Um... Yeah, a lot of sleep, and I would say that help with just a lot more peaceful. It's like everything's just really smooth. Obviously, it's not how we want things to be, and we love playing music and everything else that we get to do with people, but um, it's nice to relax. I'm about ready for it to be over. I'm done relaxing, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm yeah. enjoying it. Bennett, you have any best things that's happened with you and stay home? Mm. I too got my taxes done. Oh, nice! Ooh, Congratulations. That was, that was not going to happen otherwise. <laughs> we um, pay our taxes. Just more alone time. <laughs> it's the best thing that's happened. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed having time to call people that I haven't got to catch up with in a long time. So, I'm not offended, I'm not offended. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I've met a lot of my neighbors too, like one of my neighbors a couple days ago left a doily she made in my mailbox, which was so nice of her. Um, so kind of just getting to know some different people and everybody's been just walking around so I can kind of just wave and figure out who they are and um, just learn a little bit more about them. And also, our mom has been making a ton of dinners just at my parents' house for anybody who ever wants to, not anybody, anybody from our family, <laughs> whoever wants to show up and just eat. And so it's been kind of fun taking us back to the high school days when we had family dinner all the time. And it's, it's definitely been a solid 10 years since we've all just had the time to sit down and eat together quite a bit. So yeah, really enjoyed that. Hi, Mom. Thanks for all being on. Um, my, I think my favorite thing is that I recently got married. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I know. But with our show schedule, and he also is in a family that performs in Branson, I did not get to see him a whole bunch, especially as the regular season was starting. We were getting ready to do every single day of the week at the Dollar City, so it's been fun to actually um, just hang out and spend time together because it was getting a little crazy. So we love the crazy and we're excited to go back, but it's been fun, especially at the beginning, to just be able to hang out and spend some calm nights together. So 
Uh, okay, Stephen Morton says, obviously you were all well taught musically, incredible for one family. Were you each required to begin on a particular instrument, say the piano, and what was the progression after that for each of you? We'll start with Katie since she was the first of us. Yeah, um, yes, she was. we were not, of course, we never planned on being a bluegrass band, and so when we started music, it was piano for Matt and Ellen and I, and I think the agreement was something like you have to take for two years. Mm -hmm. So um, I ended up really liking piano, so I took through uh, college, and Julian took piano for quite a while too. Matt and Ellen took a couple years, so we did all kind of start there. We all know that. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, after we took piano for two years, we could pick another instrument to add on, which is when I added violin. So, yeah. And then, after my two years of piano, I also wanted to learn the violin, but my mom said no. She had just listened to someone learn the violin. I just so, learned this a few weeks ago. So, so uh, I played the drums. <laughs> which was the next most calm instrument. So I did that for several years. Until Dad decided we'd be a bluegrass band, and then he bought me a banjo and said, "This one's for you." Ellen had this little—I don't even know what you call it—is it a drum practice pad or something that she would carry around in the car with us, mm -hmm. with her drumsticks, like everywhere we drove. She had it in her lap, and she'd go para digital, para digital, para digital. Yeah, you sit on your lap and you just practice. So I've yeah. always just picked really obnoxious instruments. At one point, <laughs> at one point she wore a helmet and then she would do it over again. That's not really true. a low point. That's right before she met Michael. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, Emmett, did you have to play the piano? No. Joe was my first. Your parents just were so <laughs> kind and let you. Other instrument? Oh, I did play harmonica. <laughs> that gave me no understanding of the music. <laughs> <laughs> mm. People, Martin says, what's the worst nasty joke Matt's ever made to his sisters? Um, I just don't even want to think about those. Let's not read those questions. <laughs> <laughs> Like on stage, he's talking about all oh, you make fun of oh. us. Sorry, I should have. <laughs> it was like, have you heard that? What no. a dirty joke <laughs> Matt said. It's an actual question. <laughs> Matt is known for teasing his sisters on stage or in everyday life. What is the worst nasty joke Matt's ever made to his sisters? For me, they're all a blur, so you guys would probably have the emotional damage that goes with the joke, so. I will. This was recently brought up because. <laughs> For a while, Matt hasn't always talked on stage. Katie was our front MC person for many, many years. Get to mm. the question. <laughs> so she went to Nicaragua to do um, submission work, and I didn't want to talk on stage. And Matt, we all knew, had it in him. So Matt began being our front MC. So it was just Matt and I really talking, and Jules was in the band, and our mom and dad. And so I had forgotten about this joke, but. Um, I recently found a screenshot on my phone, and I had never dated anyone before I started dating Michael, and then immediately when I became his official girlfriend, I was able to text Matt and say, you can now no longer make fun of me for never having a boyfriend on stage, so that was very exciting for me back in those days, so he makes a lot of single jokes. But that wasn't the point of that text message, because I said something back. What did you say back? Ellen was like, you can't make fun of me for being single anymore. And I was just like, it's stage. I can say anything. And then that was my response. That's true. I thought you were getting to that. No, I was <laughs> yeah. talking about your joke. Like, <laughs> but we can go. My favorite Matt Byrne that I remember. Matt he, he said something about Katie being single, like the rest of her life or something <laughs> on stage. Right. And the crowd was like, ooing and eyeing. Booing. And somebody said something like, do you have a response to Katie? It was like her chance to step up to the mic and really get Matt back. And she said, none. And Matt said something like, what are you going to be in five years? Oh, <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> so good. I it's forgot about that one. Uh, she's roasting her. Uh, I miss the stage. We do have a question. 
It says your songs that are produced for online consumption are so perfect. You tape the songs in a sound room and then record the video with tracks. No, we are playing them live to answer that question. And then we get the audio and we run it through. But everything that you see on the Petersons is live was actually done in accordance with the video. Yeah. That in sense? that one take. Yeah. We usually take a couple takes of songs. Yeah. That's not the one. first time we've played that song that day, but that is actual live. So. Mm -hmm. And people asking about band pictures on them. Uh, we have someone that says it would be fun to see an egg and spoon race, sack race, and a three leg race. By us? From who? <laughs> David Welch. Yes. <laughs> so we can. We can come. <laughs> you want to They egg? want us not to now. An egg race? I don't know. An egg, egg and spoon. spoon race. Oh, like these. Oh, you put the spoon in your mouth and the egg on the spoon? No, you probably throw the egg and run. <laughs> yeah. And then chase it with the spoon. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Somebody's asking Emmett, what like quick advice do you have for somebody who wants to learn dobro? Quick advice. Well, it's just like what's something you would say to them. Um, if you're just starting out, the trickiest thing is probably learning right hand technique, knowing where the strings are so you don't have to look at that hand anymore. So you can just focus on left hand. Okay. Your rolls down, figuring out where the strings are, knowing where they are, and then you can focus on the left hand. We have another question for Emmett. Do you have another solo project in the works? No. <laughs> Uh, if y'all do not know this, Emmett has a EP called Wonders and Whims. Is that it? Called Wonders and Whims, available <laughs> on Apple Music and Spotify, <laughs> and it's really good. We actually listened to. Um, Katie, do you think it's possible to give violin lessons via FaceTime? If yes, will you teach Beth McCormick's granddaughter? <laughs> oh. <laughs> message on Facebook or something. So I actually do that quite a bit right now. FaceTime and Skype <laughs> lessons. So she'd yes. have to adjust the price for you though. Yeah. Um we have a question from Vino Phillips. Will the Hagoods and Petersons come together in an album or at least a few songs? I like both styles of music. Be interesting to hear the fusion yeah. sound from the two styles mixing up. Uh no plans on doing a combination Aww. with the Hagoods, but Michael and I enjoy playing together, but it's not really either of our styles of music, so. But, I mean, Ellen is a Hagood now, so we'll be doing the rest of our songs with the Hagoods. Oh. There you go. Without mountain stomping. That's true. <laughs> oh, someone wants to know if $100 is the top amount you can give on Patreon. We can bump that up, right? <laughs> I mean, I'll give you our PayPal. Yeah, you can send our PayPal. We'll just... Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> um... Why bluegrass? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> uh, we do have a question. When is Julianne going to be featured as a soloist? Again, on a video... And we are really trying to get another Julianne song up. We have one in the works, but she is, like we mentioned, still finishing up high school. And between being a part of our videos and um, other just office work and then trying to finish high school, which is now completely online for her, we're just really trying to get her through high school and finish that strong. And then as soon as she's graduated in a couple weeks, we have several songs that will feature her, but we're just trying to kind of take it easy on her and get her through high school. So, yeah. great question. Oh, there's a question saying they haven't seen me playing my banjo lately in videos. What's up? Hmm. So, <laughs> that was sad. 
I know. The banjo is just a very fun and happy instrument, and it just doesn't fit a lot of the songs that a band does. Maybe right. about like a third. Not fun and happy. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know, it's a different type of feel for a song when you add the banjo, and we really like the mellowness of some songs that the banjo sound would kind of interfere with. Well, and a lot of it has to do with right now, since we're not on stage performing, we're kind of doing a lot of relaxed songs, which um, we get a lot of our requests from our YouTube audience and Patreon folks. And these songs aren't really the hard driving bluegrass style. And so a lot of the stuff we've been learning recently um, just doesn't have a ton of banjo. But um, as we shift back to more of a performance schedule, we'll get some more in our repertoire too that have a lot of good banjo. Uh, J.D. Sutter said, you mean favorite song of Chris Rice or album? Man, I love a lot of Chris Rice songs. His, but the stuff I probably like the most is what I remember growing up on that my mom had playing quite a bit when we were driving places from his earlier, like, uh, Deep Enough to Dream and Andy Praise Goes On. Like, I know those are older songs, but I love them so much. And his hymn, uh, his album of hymns is really beautiful. And his love song album, I think it's called Amusing. It has When Did You Fall and Lemonade on it. And I really love those songs too. So I just think he's um, such a great musician. And I think his heart shows a lot through how he sings and plays too. So, yeah. Uh... There's a question from Bob Squirrel asking if I've tried claw hammer banjo, and I have, and I'm terrible at it. So we're closing that door. <laughs> but I did try, it, and it was not good. So thanks, Bob. Katie, somebody's wondering what the difference between a four string and a five string fiddle is. Um, there is a fifth string on the five string fiddle, <laughs> and it's actually. Um, my five-string fiddle is pretty much the equivalent of a viola and a violin combined into one instrument, so it just has an extra lower string. So if you were to take off the highest string on a regular violin, that would be a viola adding on the low four, but I have kind of both. So I have E is the highest string, then I've got A, D, G, and then the low string is a C string, and it's really pretty. So. <laughs> Somebody said, I'm going to take two strings off my mandolin in tune it as a guitar. You think that will work? <laughs> Jimbo, I do not think that's going to work too well, buddy. <laughs> try it. Please, please try send it. And send us a video. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, Mike McAllister wants to know if they can expect dancing in future videos. Oh. <laughs> we might make that at a very high tier on the Patreon. <laughs> I will say I tried to dance one time and they shut me down and it's a constant rejection. So just know that I've tried and maybe it's just not where I'm gifted and I'm accepting it. I'm also, so here's the deal. Julianne is our YouTube expert and I don't know how people are giving us money. <laughs> so thank you to the people donating to us. And also, but I'm really confused, and I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I'm also just going to say that there's so many comments about Katie and her cooking and how they, people want to marry her. So And her hair. And her hair. We're, oh. we're going to just acknowledge all those comments together and say... You haven't tried the cooking, so if that's a reason, just know that. It's, it's great. If you eat... It's <laughs> so good. <laughs> We should probably <laughs> use steak knives next time. I just... <laughs> it's a little crispy. Same. Uh, oh, we have someone asking Matt to marry them now. Oh, Matt, do you play 12 string on any of our songs? I know you have... Do you have one? I do have a 12 string. Have you played it on a song? No. I tried one time and everybody vetoed. Remember, remember that? Remember... It just didn't fit the vibe. Everybody didn't like me. I'm not a 12-string player. <laughs> so the difference between a 6-string <laughs> guitar and a 12-string uh, guitar is there's 12 strings. <laughs> six more strings in the other guitar, and they're octave apart. They sound kind of cool. You could probably do 12-string on a John Denver cover or something. Yeah, I, I actually got the 12-string from a 
Thanks, Thanks dear. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a question from Becky Stevens. Did we grow up with a lot of musicians around? And if so, how did they shape your style? Sorry. Okay. Well, I mean, our parents were around. They and shaped us. <laughs> they really did. <laughs> Somebody goes, well, never mind the cooking. <laughs> The middle was amazing. The okay. next rub oh, yeah. I baked was softer on the edges, so I think I just overbaked the first Can't wait. One. <laughs> Someone also was very confused why we're eating breakfast, because I guess it's lunchtime where they are, but there's time mm -hmm. differences. We're and musicians. Oh, somebody said they'll cook for you, Katie. Oh. <laughs> Um, no. you don't own any animals. Katie plays the most instruments. Um, we used to have animals. Yeah, we lost them. <laughs> yeah. <Excuse me. laughs> we did. We had animals for a really long time. And how old was, we had a dog named Ben. He was 14. probably, he was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And, and <laughs> And whenever he passed away last year, two years ago, two years ago, we decided that our touring schedule was a little too hectic to be able to take on a brand new animal at this point. So I have had pet fish over the past couple of years, but on our last tour to St. Louis, my pet fish starved to death. So I'm also waiting. Uh, we, someone asked where we play the most often, and that is for sure in Branson, Missouri. We normally play four times a week in the little Opry Theater here in town. Um, and then we travel out sometimes on weekends for festivals and private events, but mostly we play in Branson. Um, other random thoughts? Oh, for pets we have Henry. How does someone know about Henry? Where is Henry? Henry somewhere. Oh, I know where he is. Did you guys get a pet? Katie Henry has a pet named Henry. It's probably my fans. I put Henry oh. on my YouTube videos, so. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Anyways, so. Well. On that note, this has been so <laughs> fun. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Thank you for all the comments saying they miss Julianne. She will probably watch this later. Actually, she probably won't, but... She will. She might. <laughs> While you guys are building a puzzle. <laughs> oh, Elvin Smith. Okay, see, this makes sense to me. He gave us $10, which is very kind. He said, you can eat breakfast anytime. Oh, thanks. We appreciate that. Thank you to everyone that gave us money. <laughs> Oh. Had cinnamon rolls. I'm sorry if I'm doing this wrong and I'm supposed to be. You accidentally put charge. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what? Julian's gonna get on to us. No refund. But thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sorry if I didn't do it right. You guys paid for our breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys um, so much. Yeah, thanks. This is gonna be very awkward as I take this out of the stand. Are we the Beverly Hillbillies? No.